Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoe Back, and I'm going to do my October book haul part three. So yeah, this month again was the most extreme month I've had in quite a long time due to all library book sales and my own buying purchases online and stuff. So um, <laughs> I'm probably going to have another little uh, <laughs> talking about my book buying again. Um, I do have to come up with some kind of plan. Um, I have too many books. This is another 20 books. So I think I've, I didn't look at my spreadsheet. I don't have the exact number. I'll be able to tell you that when I do my stats, but I'm over 60. I'm pretty sure in this one month, I, I can't believe it. Actually, I'm a little stunned now that I count things out. It was a busy month and it was a little stressful in places. So there could have been some extra book buying, but I really think it's just that I let myself indulge in library book sales. So, um, I'm going to first show all the rest of the used books that I bought. First, the library book sale ones. I got six more. <laughs> and then I have some stuff that I bought used. And then um, either online or in a bookstore. And then I have um, my new purchases. So let's just get into it. It's going to take a while. So, oh, sorry. I am still, yes, I still have a cold. I still am I'm getting over it. It's just, uh, I'm still, I really woke up this morning all kind of messed up. <laughs> Anyway, so um, the first one of the so the library book sale was the last one that <laughs> I had on my list that I was gonna hit. That was in Hillsborough in Washington County, so I went to that one. Uh, first I got was a nonfiction, The Guns of August by Barbara W. Tupman, and I'm pretty sure I saw this on Steve Donahue's channel, so which is why I picked it up. I think I believe it's like supposed to be. Um, I think it's all about World War One, so. Um, um, sure. I just, you know, as I said, I think I bought, um, yeah. So I think I bought like the audiobook to this and I didn't realize, I was trying to remember when I was there if I had a physical copy and it wasn't, it was, I had an audiobook. So I can listen to this one, but now I got a physical copy too. Wasn't that much. Um, I also picked up The Last September by Elizabeth Bowden. I think I saw this on uh, Sean the Book Maniac's channel. And um, I put it on my wish list and it was sitting there and then I came across it on here. So um, I think it's the 1920s. This is from the 20s, I think. Um, and she's an Irish author, it looks like. So I don't know anything about the story. I just wrote it down at the time. So I found it, I picked it up. Um, I also got a couple more nonfiction. Uh, Simon Winchester's The Map That Changed the World. Um, so I read The Professor and the Madman last year by him. And I have, I know I have one or two other of his books on my shelf. So I seem to be collecting them, even though I haven't read the rest of them yet. But this one has to do with a map. Um, and if you know, I have an obsession with maps. I have like five books on maps. I've only read like one of them. So I'm trying to get through a couple of those maybe this year. Um, but this one has to do um, with a map that showed, like, had a, that changed something about history. Other than that, it was just, it was Simon Winchester, and it was about maps. I picked it up. Not bad. Yeah. Um, I also picked up 1916, um, A Global History by Keith Jeffries. Jeffrey? Sorry. Um, you know, I, I didn't know anything about this book, and I just happened, one of my friends on Goodreads had, like, had put down that they wanted to read it. And so I picked it up and I guess it takes, it looks like it, 12 key moments uh, from the year 1916 and he shows how um, the First World War affected pretty much the world, I guess. So I guess we'll see. Anyway, so that was kind of a cool one. Um, I also got um, Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin or Life Among the Lowly. Um, my dad and I were talking about this when we were on vacation and we both had realized neither of us had read it and so he found a copy while we were out doing our book shopping and it wasn't the greatest copy but I found this gorgeous penguin classic like perfectly new so anyway I have not this is one of those ones where I read a section of it in college for my English introductory course and I've never gone back to read it and again it's one of those those ones those books I feel like is on that list that I should read so that's why I got it and then I got the second book in the War of the Roses. Um, this is Margaret of Anjou by Con... Oh, how did they say this name? Iglund? I don't know how you say that. But I have the first book, Stormbird, I bought um, earlier this year, I believe. So 
but the second book was there and it was really pretty and I just took it anyway so hopefully I'll like this series I'm hoping again I need to read more historical fiction I feel like this year I have failed my historical fiction reads the couple that I've there's only been a couple that I picked up that I had liked and I've just not had a good um chance of that so I'm hoping in the next year I can um pick up more because I really do like historical fiction okay so those are the last those are the library books library book sales are done until April <laughs> and then we'll go through this whole thing again we'll see what happens um I picked up two books um from marketplace on Amazon uh, I got the egoist by George Meredith no I take it back I got this on eBay so um I couldn't find a copy at the bookstores that were close to me and I didn't find one online but I got a pretty cheap copy it's not it's not the best copy but I didn't pay a whole lot for it but um, I know people have been talking about George Meredith here on um, during Victober so um, it was one I really wanted to have on my shelf to try at some point and um, even though I hear it's a it's a harder read for some people I'm willing to give it a shot so I figured I didn't pay that much for it but I really want to try it um, I also I did get off the of marketplace I got the uh, Victorian Chase Lounge by um, well, Mohandi Lasky. So I have Thunder on the Right by her. No, that's not the one by her. Is that by the one by her? I have one of her other books from Persephone. And uh, I've been wanting to get this one forever. Somebody said it's kind of, I think it's like kind of a ghost story. And um, I don't know a whole lot about it, but it was really short, but it was really expensive online. And it took me a while to find a copy that online that wasn't. Uh, too bad and one day it dropped in price on marketplace and I just grabbed it. And it's a fairly it's okay copy and It's got some stickers on the back, but it's fine. So I don't know. I I know I've seen I think it was Simon at Savage Read that read this one I don't know. I think I added it to my list a really long time ago. So maybe you guys know <laughs> But I hear it's good and then the last used copies I got at Powell's I went there on purpose for these two books because I really enjoyed the first book in September. So I got Caliban's War and, um, oh, Abaddon's Gate. I don't know how you say that. <laughs> anyway, these are by, by James S.A. Corey, and these are the second and third books in the Expanse series. And I do want to continue the second book in January. <laughs> We'll see if that happens. I'm hoping January or February at the latest. I really want to keep with this series and try to get through quite a few of them this year, this coming year, because uh, I want to uh, get into it. And I really enjoyed the first book, so I wanted to continue with some sci-fi, and these are epic, so <laughs> I'll have to you know, move them around. I mean, as in, don't read them quite close together, but I thought if I gave it four or five months, then I'd be ready for another one, so hopefully that'll work. Okay, so then I have some books from that I bought from Amazon. Uh, the first one is <laughs> a Mackenzie Clan Christmas by Jennifer Ashley. Um, I collect gen most of Jennifer Ashley's books. I really enjoy her as an author. This is her uh, historical fiction or her historical romance uh, series. And it um, is the Mackenzie McBride series. And this has to do, it just has two novellas that are... Um, their Christmas times when they would come, when all the characters from all the books would come together and they have little adventures. And again, it's like 1890s, 1880s, 1890s. I can't remember the actual time period, but it's close to that. That's historical fiction. It's just, it's fun. And again, I love these books. I have all of them. I'm still behind, I think one or two, but I have read one of the Christmas ones here and the other one's a new one. So I'll read that around Christmas time. I almost bet on it. So I also got Lorna Dune by R.D. Blackmore. So um, yeah, I do pick up a lot of Victorian literature in October because I see other people reading it and talking about it. And this is one I didn't know a whole lot about and I still don't know a whole lot about it, but I heard more rave reviews about it this this month and this year than I have before. So I thought I'd give it a shot. I don't know, never read this author. Um, and again, this was published in 1869 and um, I think it's just drama. I don't know. I don't know. I don't actually know. We'll see. <laughs> it's a classic that I haven't read or even attempted. Um, I also picked up the next Murakami or um, Haruki Murakami's books, uh, Killing uh, Commandor. Common is that Commandori? Something like that. 
Anyway, I don't, I didn't even look to see what it was about. It's Murakami. I own all his books except for one because I hated it. <laughs> um, so um, I got it from the library that time and I didn't, I'm not buying that book. But everything else, like he's a hit or miss author for me too, but like a lot of people say. But I usually love his epic ones. Like usually it's the shorter ones I don't get along with as well. But when they're pretty epic, I'm... I'm usually into it and I really want to get back to the couple that I've left. I have two really big ones that I haven't finished. So this is now a third one, but I just got it and it was, it was, it dropped in price one day and I just ordered it. And then I got uh, two kind of small ones and this was The Frozen Deep by Wilkie Collins. So I had never heard of this one, but I guess this was a play that he and Charles Dickens put on. And then he novelized it or something at some point. I'm not quite sure. I was a little confused. I thought I was getting a play. <laughs> it has to do with uh, going, um, trying, I think, through trying to do the north, northwest, find a northwest passage and stuff goes down. Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> I said, that's all I need to know. And then I found um, A Thousand and One Ghosts by Alexander Dumas. Again, I love um, Alexander Dumas' writing um, with Three Musketeers in that series, which I need to continue. Um, but this was, um, I think it's, I, I just, I think it's supposed to be ghost stories or something. Again, I saw this on somebody's channel and I go, I need that. Because <laughs> it's Alexander Dumas and it has ghosts. I don't know. We'll see. Sorry. Um, and then I have um, a few more from Book Depository because I got a coupon. Um, I got Return of the, the Return of the Sh Soldier by Rebecca West. I think I saw people reading this in September, and so it made me um, put it on my list. And it has to do with a man, I think, who is injured in one of the world. And, oh, I guess it must be um, in the First World War. And he doesn't remember his life, but he remembers his life from like 10 or, 10 or so years before that. And it has to do with the women who he returns to and what are they going to do if he doesn't remember them or doesn't remember what happened and things. So I don't know. I heard good things. Um, I did pick up Adam Bede by um, George Eliot. I, I wasn't sure I was going to pick up the, um, well, I don't knit. So I didn't do the knit and listen, which was kind of sad. It made me want to pick up knitting, but I just, I have cats and that sounds like dangerous things to have with cats. Anyway, but um, I thought, oh, I'll pick, maybe I'll pick the audiobook up and do that. But then I, I, I didn't. But I ordered this and it came later in the month. So I didn't really have a chance on it. Maybe next year. I don't know. But this is her first novel. I don't remember what year. It must have been late 1850s or 1860. I don't remember what the date was. But, um, but I hear a lot of people have really enjoyed this and were surprised. Because it's not one of her more famous ones. Because I didn't know anything about this until the Nitton lesson. And... I mean, I had not read a George Eliot until this month, so, but again, that'll be in my wrap up <laughs> or my, you know, update. I'll let you know on that one, but I'm looking forward to reading this now and, um, I have it, <laughs> even though it's a chunker and <laughs> huge. I also picked up Dr. Jekyll, Dr. Da, 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 da. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. I read this many years ago. Uh, it might've been even college. I don't remember, but I don't own a copy of it and People were talking about it and I'm like, ah, I, I kind of would like to reread that. I actually read a lot of his like Kidnapped and Treasure Island. Is there one more? There's, I, I read a couple of them a long time ago. Actually, it was probably um, a lot earlier than I, I'm remembering, but I did read quite a bit of his stuff and then I don't own any of it. I don't know what, I must've got them all from the library. So I just figured I would get one and at least read that one again and maybe I'll get some of the other ones for some other time. And then I got two Charles Dickens um, because now I've decided I need to read all the Dickens now that I finished Bleak House. So I got Oliver Twist and I got Great Expectations. So I'm figuring Great Expectations is going to be the one I pick up next. That's the one most people recommended as one of his books um, to pick up um, after I've gone through. I've done Bleak House, but now I'm like, what do I go to next? So we'll see. But I got a couple more, and they were, you know, I got them all. Anyway, I'm working on my collection. I don't have all of them yet. I got quite a few Dickens. I really don't need to buy any more. So as I said, <laughs> I have bought way too many books in October. Yes, it was wonderful. I really didn't spend that much money. I actually spent probably the same amount of money I spent most months. It was just, it accumulated in a lot more books because they were book sales 
um, which is awesome. It's just I don't have that much space on my shelves anymore. I have to do some rearranging and maybe a little purging. So we will see how that goes. But um, if you guys saw anything in here that you think I should put on my list to read sooner rather than later, let me know. I'm, um, as I said, I, I've got a lot of books and I, I think I need to just curb myself just a little bit and maybe try to read a few before I buy any more books. We're gonna, I'm not doing a no buy because that freaks me out and then I start over buying. But November's hopefully gonna be a very small month compared to the last couple months. So we will see what happens. Anyway, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.